and hello youtubers this is anonymous t hello to all of the anonymous t sippers hope you all are having an amazing day today today i'm going to be reviewing yesterday's s'more date interview that florida did and i've got to be honest guys it was pretty underwhelming I, you know, the guy was bragging about having over 500 questions submitted for Florida. I thought we were going to dig deep into the Corey, Florida, Olivia drama. I thought we were going to dig deep into a lot of the Charlie drama. And, you know, it just seemed like the host still was back in August, still watching the episodes of Love Island and still going back to storylines that happened on the show five months ago when this postseason has been way more interesting, way more enticing way more entertaining than anything that happened this season on the show. And he just completely dropped the ball. I'm just going to say it. He completely dropped the ball. He stayed too much and too focused on all these random Jeremy questions. And Jeremy is a non-factor right now. And it was just weird. It was just very, very weird. And I felt that, you know, for somebody bragging about having 500 questions, I would have thought he would have chose like some actual good ones. And I felt like the ones that he chose were kind of, eh. and then, you know, as an interviewer, if somebody says something revealing in their answer, as an interviewer, if you're paying attention, you're supposed to ask a follow up question to what they just said. So the biggest thing that was revealed um, were a couple of things, which was, um, you know, Corey and Florida were texting a lot, apparently, as soon as he got out of the villa, because if you'll remember on the show, um, they were talking about traveling together and all this and that. Another thing that kind of distorts some of the other tea that the other Islanders have been saying um, that's a different perspective from Florida is that Corey was telling her that for several weeks that things were not good with him and Olivia, that they really weren't together, um, that he's not treating her right and this and that. And so they were already bonding over their own relationship issues. So by the time that they both got to Miami, they let loose, they made out not only at the bar or club or wherever they were, but also Corey stayed with Florida. And so she said in her answer first, the first time she said they only kissed, but then she said another time that things went further than kissing, but that they did not have sex. And the interviewer completely missed the boat on asking a follow-up question on that. And, you know, because Florida was very transparent that if she had sex, she would have said it. Like, it's just things like that to where he has interviewed enough of these islanders to where there's no excuse for him not to know how to ask a follow-up question. Um, but he just kept cutting off Florida or just asking irrelevant questions. Um, and then Florida made some comment that Jeremy broke up with her because she was, quote-unquote, too perfect. I don't buy that's the real reason. I think that's fake news. I think Jeremy was bothered by whatever happened with Corey in Miami and decided to dead that situation. Um, also, Florida is doubling down that she doesn't feel that anything that took place was cheating because of the fact that although Olivia and Corey were exclusive, they quote unquote were not in a relationship. And, you know, basically Corey made it seem like they weren't together at all, which is a different account of what Olivia and others are saying. And also, um, I also find it wild that, um, you know, Florida wanted to make it a point that she did not feel guilty because she didn't feel that, you know, her and Olivia were really that good of a friend. She felt she was better friends with Shannon and Cash. And that's who she told that, you know, the hookup happened. And apparently, you know, while they were in Atlantic City, they told her to tell Olivia or they would. And then right after that, Florida talked to Corey and Corey told her not to tell Olivia that he was going to tell Olivia on his own time, which ended up being way after the Atlantic City trip, because by the time um, he did, you know, FaceTime and tell Olivia, there were already other Islanders who told her in Atlantic City what took place, as well as, you know, Olivia confirming she was having three-way phone calls with some of the other Islanders, because she felt as though there were other Islanders that were keeping it from her. And then finally, Corey um, confirmed, you know, what took place that he did hook up with Florida. So 
Um, and then it was weird because there was also like a sip in, um, you know, truth or sip type of thing where Florida was asked to sip if she thinks that Olivia and Corey will get back together. And so she took a sip, but I don't know if I'm buying they're necessarily going to get back together because if Corey is describing that he's extremely unhappy and he hasn't been treating Olivia right and knows that and allegedly may have already been broken up for three weeks, then I don't see how they're getting back together if this is all going down. If he's already stressed with all the drama and Florida was saying that Corey felt a certain type of way about how the fans come for him because he's not used to all this you know fanfare and all this fame because he didn't have that many followers before he went into the villa and so he's not used to all this attention he's not used to being dragged and I don't know where Corey was getting dragged because I felt like everybody was dragging Florida pretty good because everybody felt like this was a violation of girl code but when it's guys it's a double standard like nobody cares um when you're like doing dirty macking and stuff or whatever so um then I think the only other thing, so yeah, the other thing was she said that she didn't see it for Will and Kyra to get back together. And then she said something interesting because um, for some reason, I don't know why people are obsessed with the Cash Cinco and Trina Triangle. Like, I feel like we teleported back into August and, and July. And I'm like, what are we doing? Like, the show is over. There's so much more drama. There's so much more tea that we could be getting into. But anyways... He was asking, you know, Florida, like what she thought of the whole situation. And so Florida said that when she got on the show from the episodes that she watched, that it was, you know, Trina and Cinco were together, that that was Trina's man. And then she said when she got to the villa, that Cash Im immediately pulled her to the side and told her that um, Cinco and her are meant to be together and that Cinco is her man. And then she said something else that there was something else that happened in the episodes after the fact, after she got out of the villa. But I felt like she's kind of talking sideways because how can it be that you watch the episodes beforehand to see that Trina and Cinco were together and how all of that came to be? But then you sort of flip it and reverse it and then say, oh, but when I came out and watched the episodes um, again, it was this. I, I felt like she was trying to clean that up. And um, yeah, so I'm a little sussed out by that answer because I'm like, there's something that you're not telling or you caught yourself about to spill some actual tea and then you ran it back and, you know, flipped it and reversed it into something else is exactly what I took from that answer. Um, so then um, there was like a question in terms of, you know, who would she F marry or get rid of? And so um, between Corey, Josh and Jeremy. And so, um, you know, she said if this was a couple of months ago that she would marry Jeremy F Corey and get rid of Josh because Josh is like a little brother to her. And they also asked if, you know, if there if there was anyone else in the villa that she was interested in or would she have gone for Josh? And she said no. They asked Florida if she was interested in anybody else from Love Island, any of the other men. And she said no, she's done dealing with all the Love Island men. And, you know, then she was also asked if, you know, she would ever get back with Corey or if they would do anything again. And she said no, she's completely done with Corey. Um, and then she said that, you know, if things were to work out with Jeremy, that would be the only Islander that she would ever consider going back to, which I find ironic because all week I have been posting. Um, <laughs> Leslie is in NYC and has been hanging out quite a bit with Jeremy. And so all of this is just hilarious to me. In her recent interview that she felt that Florida was breaking girl code by doing this. And, you know, Florida doesn't think much, I guess, of her friendship with Olivia. So that was wild. Um, also, the host was asking another question about Cash trying to, um, I guess, find out from Florida or get her perspective on why Cash and Cinco aren't official. And I just didn't understand... I don't understand these interviews where there's so much tea about the person you're interviewing that's on the table, but instead we redirect and we pivot and we ask about other people's tea. And I just don't understand. Like, I just don't, like I wanted to get to the Charlie drama. I wanted to get to the fact that, you know, 
Florida was spilling in the comments that Charlie tried to kiss Olivia and why she said that. I wanted to get into the tea and to why, you know, Florida unfollowed Charlie, but then the next day met Charlie in Tulum and was sitting on his lap in a deleted story and was flirting with him and then refollowed him back again. That was the tea I wanted to get to. However, instead, he is asking, you know, why Cash and Cinco aren't official. And, you know, Florida gives some answer that, you know, maybe he's scared of commitment or people are scared of commitment. And that's why they just do the exclusive thing, but not relationship. Or, you know, they just spend time together and do this and that, but they don't officially want to put a title or a label on anything because then it just means commitment and then that freaks people out. But I'm sorry, um, that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> like, I don't understand this new this new thing where, you know, whether it's an entanglement, whether it's a situationship, whether it is, you know, something casual or we're not going to define this yet. Like, I'm sorry, Um you know, I like everybody in the cast, but this whole thing where people are spinning this narrative that people are exclusive but not together, but then you're excusing people to do more than kissing on somebody you allegedly, quote unquote, were exclusive with, um, or you're claiming to be exclusive with somebody, but they don't want to, you know, see certain people that you're, you know, related to and everything else. Like, I have a problem with that. Like, either you're in a relationship or you're not. Um, but this whole thing where we're going to say we're exclusive, quote unquote, but we're not defining it as anything. Um, I have an issue with that because I'm not telling somebody that I love that, um, you know, oh, well, we're, um, you know, not boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, no, 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 no. Either we're boyfriend and girlfriend or we're not. Um, and that's just how, you know, I was brought up. Like, there's no in between. <laughs> there's no there's no in between because all that means is that opens the door for a situation like what just happened with Corey and Olivia, where he feels since technically they're not officially boyfriend and girlfriend that he can do him. And, and that's not okay. That's not okay behavior. Um, so really that was the meat of the interview. Like I said, there were so many questions that could have been asked that were completely avoided. And I just, I'm just over it. I hope there's no more Islanders that are doing this because I feel like the more that we've done this, that it just kind of feels like the host is mailing it in and just not asking the right questions that we need the actual answers to. And I thought for sure Florida was really going to get like some hard hitting questions and she really did not like she got a lot of softball questions. Um, so I found that to be interesting. And I would even argue that even though Florida got some backlash, I would say that she didn't even get a lot of the hate or anything that I was expecting, you know, to happen. And either that was because people didn't like Olivia as much and liked Florida more or it was because, um, you know, of some other factors. But I felt that certain Islanders also really tried to set, shut the situation down and, you know, try to blame it on Charlie or try to blame it on other people. And it was just weird. I was like, you know, um, and then even Florida in this interview diminishing her friendship with Olivia. And it's like, well, what's the point of all of these reunion tours if you guys truly aren't that good of friends with each other um, to where you have no problem, you know, hooking up with Corey because you don't feel that you owe anything to Olivia. So it's like, all right, like if this is how you guys really feel about each other and you're, <laughs> um, you know, doing separate Airbnbs and trying to separate who can, you know, be in which limo and everything else, then maybe we should stop the world tour dates. Like maybe we should just put a pause on that and put a pin in it. And then whoever gets along with whoever can hang out and then just keep it moving. Like there's no need to keep doing these trips if, you know, stuff like this is going to pop off and happen. And then you're not going to feel a certain way about, you know, things that you do because you're not really that close to that person. Even though you present this image on social media that, oh, we all love each other. Oh, we all get along and blah, 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 blah. But really that's not the case. So yeah, that was all that really happened. Just a completely missed opportunity by the host to really dig in more into this Olivia, Florida, um, and Corey situation to dig more into the Charlie situation. Like, he had a layup to, you know, <laughs> really slam dunk this interview. And I'm just I'm just so agitated because I felt like it was a waste of time. And like outside of the Love Island stuff, really 
other than that, um, he just asked questions about like her dating history and, you know, a craziest date moment. And, and then he asked her two truths and a lie that this was the other issue I had. So he had a, a question right off the bat, a two truths and a lie. And, you know, Florida says, you know, obviously, you know, her three things and you know he guesses that the 11 si siblings is a f is false and i was like really like you didn't think that that's a possibility and um because i knew right away without even knowing florida's family i'm like oh yeah she definitely has um you know <laughs> 10 siblings or whatever it was and or 11 siblings and he, he didn't even ask the follow-up to like which was the lie and so it's like again like this guy he, He's either messy and he's so messy that he's like completely um, unfocused on how to run these interviews or he just does a terrible job of asking follow up questions and always cutting people off to get into some other nonsensical, unimportant information. And it's just like, what are you doing <laughs> like, can we just, can we just stop it? Can we just stop all of it? Can we, can we stop and restart the interview, um, with the actual questions that were relevant? And, um, but yeah, that was really it. Like her hinge dates, uh, some other stuff, like her dating a former athlete and some crazy date story, but that was honestly all. Um, so again, um, that was it. Um, let me know what you guys think of that. Let me know if you guys think if you guys watched this more date interview or not, if you felt it was, you know, lacking. Um, what do you guys think? I, I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts. Um, but that was all I had. Um, if this is your first time viewing my channel, thank you so much. Welcome. If you are here a second or third time, Thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you. I love interacting with all of you. And um, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please hit the notification button so that you are alerted the moment that I post new content on this channel. And per usual, I will talk to you guys again very soon. And happy holidays.